So here's our project, that machine project. This is all mapped out inside Logic now. Separate MIDI tracks and separate audio outputs. You can see over here, I'll expand this. These individual tracks are on separate MIDI channels and that represents each group inside machine. I'm not gonna go into the routing. That's something that St. Joe has covered very well on one of the machine tutorials videos. I wanted to show you something here that I noticed and um, what it is, this applies to anything. This doesn't have to be machine or it doesn't have to be logic, Ableton, whatever. This is a sound over here that feels relatively loud in terms of the level that I'm seeing on the meter. Okay, so this is this cabasa. So have a look, the peak value so far, you can just click on that and reset it. So it's minus three dBs and um, I'm gonna just open this up to show you something. So let's bring the EQ over. This new Logic EQ is great. The analyzer is really clear and we can see a real abundance of energy up at 20K. So when you've got that, that can actually increase the level considerably. And it means you're gonna run up with basically less headroom in the mix. So I'm gonna turn on the high cut. We're gonna roll down the frequencies and let's see what we can get away with. I'm gonna turn this up this side. We want to see when our ears are picking up a difference in the sound. You can really hear that we've lost that fizzy high end. But if I take it about here, it feels similar enough. Let me put it back in the mix. And if anything, it's actually increased the clarity of some of the other elements. You know, you don't have too many things running at the same time with a lot of high, high frequencies. So we're gonna reset the meter here and I'm gonna solo that and let's see if we've gained any headroom. Minus 4.2, so we've actually gained a whole dB and a little bit more. So I'm gonna show you that, we're gonna bypass. There we go, peak value of minus three. Let's turn this on peak value of minus 4.2. So make sure you go through your mix and make sure you haven't got too much higher frequency energy. Also the same works on the bottom end as well. And if you want some uh, extra information on this, check out my black book video on this subject. But I just wanted to point this out to you. And um, on a machine tip, you know, like I said, check out the tutorial from St. Joe. But I'll just give you a quick um, tour here. So you can see if you want to set up the MIDI stuff, you click on this icon at the top and you can see that we've got a, a MIDI section here. When it comes to beats, what you need to do is to set the group and you've got here the input. So you set the MIDI channel. So this is MIDI channel one for my beats up here. The root note is C3. This is active and you need to go through the individual sounds. Okay, it's a bit boring, but it needs to be done. So you go to sound and you go to output and go to MIDI, set the host and uh, then set the MIDI channel that you're working with. Transpose for the first sound is zero and then you work your way through. Transpose for the second sound is one, the third sound is two and so on. Once you've done that, then you can do your drag and drop MIDI. Okay, it's a bit long winded, but that's the way to do it. Like I said, go and see St. Joe's video because it's much better than my quick explanation there. So um, yeah, the main point of the video, Watch out for the ultra, ultra high frequencies. You don't need them. A lot of libraries come with those samples. Um, so you don't always need that energy. You can gain some headroom. I've probably got a fair amount of headroom that I can gain on this. So when I've finished with it, I'll put some notes into the comments and you can see how many uh, dBs that I gained as extra headroom for the mix.